Hello, mathletes. Today we are going to be reviewing for our mod 8 test. So please get out a sheet of paper right now to do this review on. Okay, this is going to be handed in for points. So bring the sheet that you're going to do this on to class the next day I see you and submit it in today, Schoology, for your points. Okay, so make sure you submit it to get your points and then bring it to class next time I see you so that we can go over this and correct it together in class. All right, so this first one is going to be a graph. Now I already have a nice graph made, but some of you might need to make yourself an XY coordinate plane and do your graph this way. Some of you might have some graph paper, some of you might not. So if you need to, go ahead and pause this video and go ahead and make yourself a graph. All right, I'm gonna do this top equation in blue. So what is my y-intercept in the top equation? So remember, we're looking for a number outside here and there's nothing here. So that means it starts here at zero, which is where we were doing our module, module two, three, and four. We were talking about something was proportional and it would go through the origin. So now what is our slope of this equation? What number is in front of x? And nothing's written there, so it's a one and we do one over one. All right, so let me put some dots in here and hopefully I have made enough so that when I make my other line that these two lines will connect at a nice point. All right, my second one I'm gonna do in red. So what is this y-intercept? And this y-intercept is this plus six. So one, two, three, four, five, six is gonna be what that y-intercept is. And the slope here of this second equation is a negative one. So I have negative one over one, down one over one, down one over one, and there it be, it hits that line. Now what is the solution? So make sure you write this final answer that it's over one, two, three, and up one, two, three. All right, so our answer is three, three. These two lines are meeting at the point three, three. There is one solution here and that one solution is the ordered pair three three. All right, tell whether this ordered pair is a solution. So does negative five, if I were to graph these, is that point right there where they meet negative one five? That's what we want to find out. So let's just put, I'm going to do this in place of x. I'm going to have a negative 1 in place of y. I'm putting a 5, and I'm going to solve this. So I have negative 2 plus 15. So I get 13 equals 13. So it's definitely a yes for this bottomy one. So now let's see if it works for this top one. So I have minus for this minus, and then I have to put in a negative 1 plus five, and does that equal six? Well, minus a negative is really just a positive. So one plus five is six. So yes, it works here. So yes, negative one, five is a solution. Solve by substitution. Okay, we know that y equals x plus 4. So in this top equation, it says 2x plus, and this thing is y. Now, instead of writing y, I'm not going to write this y, I'm going to write what y equals, which is x plus 4. So 2x plus x is 3x plus 4 equals 4. Now let's subtract four from both sides. So three x equals zero and divide both sides by three. So x is zero. So we know it's zero comma something. All right, I'm gonna go into this bottom equation. Y equals zero plus four. Well, zero plus four is just four. So it's zero comma four. So the solution to this system is gonna be zero comma four. All right, copy this one down and then <clears throat> resume your video and let's get started. 
Okay, so I've got y equals and y equals. So if both of them are y equals, that means that x plus 3 is equal to 2x plus 4. So I'm going to combine like terms. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So these are going to cancel, and I get 3 equals x plus 4. So now when I subtract 4 from both sides, I get negative 1 equals x. All right, so I have half my answer, negative 1, and I'm going to put a negative 1 in here. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2, so that means my y value is 2. So the solution here is negative 1 comma 2. All right, solve. I'm not going to graph. I'm not going to use substitution. This one, I'm going to use elimination. You'll see how the x's are lined up, y's are lined up, numbers are lined up. So when I add these two together, 2x plus 3x is 5x, and 5y minus 5y, those are going to cancel out. And now negative 24 plus 14 is a negative 10. Divide by 5. So x is negative 2. So now I'm going to go back and substitute 2 times negative 2 plus 5y is negative 24. So I have negative 4 plus 5y is negative 24. Let's add 4, add 4. So 5y equals negative 24 plus 4 is a negative 20. Divide both sides by 5 and y is negative 4. So my solution or answer here is negative 2 comma negative 4. So I use the elimination method because these y's canceled out right away. All right, oh, graphing doesn't look good, substitution doesn't look good, nothing just adds up. But I see this is a negative y and this is a plus y. So my game plan here is I'm going to keep this equation exactly the same. And what I'm planning on doing here is I want to get rid of my y's. So if I'm going to get rid of my y's and if this says a plus 3y, I want a negative 3y so that when I add these up, my y's will cancel out. So what can I multiply this top equation by so that I get a negative 3 here? So if I multiply by 3, by 3, by here, 3, so my plan is to multiply by 3. So I get 3x, 3 times negative y is negative 3y, and 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So now when I add up 3x plus 5x, I get 8x. My y's cancel out, and negative 9 plus 1 is a negative 8. <clears throat> Divide both sides by 8, so x is negative 1. I'm going to go put that in that top equation. So negative 1 minus y equals negative 3. Add 1, add 1. So the opposite of y, negative y, equals a negative 2. Well, I don't want to know what a negative y is. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1, and y is 2. So I get the ordered pair, negative 1, comma, 2 for my solution. Okay, nothing just got rid of right away, so I had to make sure that my y's lined up to be the same. All right, so I've got one more thing I want to talk about here. So if we have something where I graph this red line and this red line here, this is called a system because it have two equations on here. Okay, if I have something else and I draw and I have a line, this green line goes through here. So let's just say that's y equals minus x plus 1. And now I'm going to do another line on the same one. I'm going to say 2y equals minus 2x plus 2. So when I graph that one, because I have to divide everything by 2, so I get y by itself, I get minus x plus 1. So now I'm going to graph this blue one, and as it turns out, it's right on top 
of that green one. So how many solutions does each graph have? How many solutions in each graph? Okay, well in this first one, in graph number one, how many solutions do those two lines have in common? So how many places do those two red lines meet? And they have no points in common, so this is gonna be considered no solutions. These lines are parallel. So this equation of this top one could be something like y equals one half x plus four. And the second equation could be something like y equals one half x minus five. And what do we notice about these two red lines? Red lines, if we're talking about parallel lines, their slopes are gonna be the same, and that's why they're parallel, and that's why there's no solutions. Okay, and how about number two? How many points, or how many solutions are in this system? Green line and blue line. Well, isn't every single point on that line the same? So there's so many of them, we can't name them all, so we say that there are infinite solutions infinite solutions. We can't possibly name them all. And what happened in all the other problems that we had is that all of the other problems met at a particular point and that's what we did is we named that particular point. They met at this point. So there would be one solution. All right, I hope this helps with your review and good luck on your homework.